We've created these separations between concepts that Jesus and Paul and all of the other apostles did not draw. They did not separate these things. Why? Because they understood the point, and we have missed the point. Today, in 2019, we have redefined words. And now we read the Bible with those preconceptions in our mind, and we don't even understand it. Number one, because we define things wrong, and number two, because we read it through the glasses of sermons and teachings and books, so we can't even see what it actually says. Also, we read things completely out of context. I've never talked to somebody that says, oh yeah, I take things out of context. Of course not. But we think that context means back up a few verses or read the chapter before it. Not just that. I noticed something in 1 Corinthians today that I've never seen before. And the reason I saw it is because I saw that chapters 8, 9, and 10 were actually the same point. I've been reading, taking note of who are the Corinthians, because that matters when you're writing a letter. I would never write the same letter to my brother-in-law as I would to my husband, or to my mother as I would to my father. It's different relationships, different people. You might not say the same thing to a first grade student that you would to a 12th grade student. So you have to keep that in mind. Like, Paul's tone in 1 Corinthians is very different than his tone to the Ephesians, for example. Keep track of these things. What is Paul saying about their character traits? What they're doing good and bad? What is Paul saying in terms of his tone? Is he praising them? Is he correcting them? These are important things because you might read a letter that he wrote to someone who he's saying they're walking in the Spirit, and his instructions to them might look very different than his instructions to somebody who he's saying, you guys aren't walking by the Spirit at all, which is what he says to the Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians, in the first few chapters. Does that mean that not all of the Bible is inspired, or not all the Bible applies to you? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, maybe you're reading it wrong. For example, in chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians, Paul is talking about a guy who's sleeping with his stepmother and he says he can't even believe his ears that this is happening and that it's so wrong. That hopefully doesn't apply to you specifically, however, it's still the inspired word of God. There's still a point and a principle that you can take and apply as a warning and as what you would use to discern between right and wrong. That's how we're supposed to read the Bible. It's supposed to be our instruction manual. So I just want to say that because it's important, because you can't take Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 8, 3, I'm just pulling that out of thin air, and say, oh, well, 1 Corinthians 8, 3 says this, so I have to do this. Okay, maybe, but what does 1 Corinthians 8, 2 say, and what does 1 Corinthians chapter 5 say, and what does 1 Corinthians chapter 12 say? Only then can you see the full picture of what Paul is saying and why. This is very important because Paul actually says this clearly in another one of his letters. The purpose of my instruction is, ready, that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. But some people have missed this whole point. If that's Paul's mindset, then that applies to everything he ever said. You have to keep that in mind while you're reading your Bible, and that's part of what context means. It's understanding what that person said in general as a whole. If someone was interviewed, and then only parts of that interview were shown, you might not have the full picture. You might go to the guy that was interviewed later and say something about what you saw, and he might be like, no, they took that out of context. That's not what I said. I actually said this. We all are familiar with that concept, and yet when we read the Bible, it's like we forget about that. We forget about that because there's a lie in the church today that says because it is the inspired word of God, therefore, every verse stands alone. Where did we even get this concept. You cannot take one piece of scripture and understand it by itself. 
okay, so you may come to me and say in response, yeah, but like I can only read so much at a time. Okay, I get that our time is sometimes limited. There's only so much you can read in a day of a book this size. However, how much effort are you putting into it? How much effort are you pu putting in to know the Word of God? Because if you come to me and you tell me that you spend 15 minutes a day reading the Bible, I'm going to tell you, okay, you're never going to understand the context, but because by the time you get to Paul's last letter, you're not even going to remember his first letter. Like, you won't remember what Paul thinks about things in general, you're just going to remember the chapters you read that week. But for the person who spends two hours a day reading the Bible, guess what? They're going to know the context a lot better. Because by the time they get to 1 Timothy, they're going to say, oh yeah, I just read an Acts last month when Paul took Timothy, this is what was going on. So that must have something to do with what he's saying to Timothy. In the same way, when you read 1 Corinthians and you get to the end where he's talking about spiritual gifts and different things like that, prophecy, things that we talk a lot about in church, if you're reading your Bible in context and you're reading your Bible enough, you will remember that in the beginning of 1 Corinthians, he says, I can't give you meat I have to give you milk. You guys are like unspiritual people. I can't even talk to you like spiritual people. That means that by the end of 1 Corinthians, he's still writing to the same unspiritual people who need milk that he was writing to in the beginning. Therefore, if we are stuck on prophecy and tongues and different things, I'm not saying that's bad. We need to understand those things. But you also need to understand that if you're stuck on those things, you are stuck on milk because Paul already said that that was milk. This is a big deal because this is not how we're taught in church. We need to get to the point where we're not just living on milk, where we can live like Christ and act like Christ. Read your Bible in context. If you don't read your Bible in context, you will not understand what it says. You might know what the words say, but you will not understand what it means. You cannot understand what it means if you don't read it correctly. The Bible is big and intimidating, and frankly, we don't want to read it. But that is a problem. You also will not understand if you're not hungry. So if you don't have that hunger, you need to ask God, why not? Well, I remember going to small groups at one church that I went to in the past, where we would literally go around the room talking about how dry we all felt spiritually and how hard it was to be able to spend time with God. We had to keep pushing ourselves anyway and making sure we were being faithful. And none of us realized that that indicated such a bigger problem. We didn't have that hunger. If you don't have that hunger, there's something wrong. Either you don't have the Holy Spirit at all or you need to repent because there's something else distracting you. Maybe you love the world and you don't even know it. And how can you know if you do? By knowing your Bible and seeing what it is that God hates and what it is that God loves and how your life compares to that. That's the only way you're going to know. So how badly do you really want to know? How badly do you really want to know what it is that makes you feel like there's gotta be more to life. That feeling of being miserable, but you know you shouldn't be because you know Jesus and it's not supposed to work that way and you're supposed to have joy and what's wrong and da da da. I guess this is just how everybody is. No, that's just what everybody has told you. You go read your Bible and you tell me if you think Paul felt that way. You go read and you see what his experience of God was and you tell me if your experience is like that because I can almost guarantee that if you have that nagging feeling in you, your experience is nothing like Paul's. So it's up to you. How hungry are you? If you do that with a sincere heart and you trust that the Holy Spirit wants to be your teacher like he said he wants to be, he will teach you. But you've got to show up to class. So read your Bible in context.